Having a process in place to building websites is really important for me because it helps to keep things organized and it's honestly just less work for my brain. It's something that I've been refining over the past year and in this series of three videos, I'm gonna show you my entire website building process in the context of making my personal website. So I'll show you everything, including how I use AI to generate ideas, how I mock up my designs in Figma, and how I develop in Webflow. Now, before we start, I want you to know something. I'm not perfect, and some of the steps that I'm gonna show you look quite sloppy. They're not very pretty, but I wanna be transparent about this because it takes a while to get to a good looking product. And I think by seeing these imperfections, you'll realize that there's no magic to what I'm doing. And you can adopt a lot of these strategies and create really good looking websites on your own. So with that being said, let's dive in. Okay, so in this first video, I'm gonna be talking about how I use AI to generate ideas. So some of the tools I use are free, and then some of them are paid. I'll be sure to let you know which is which. You could just not use AI altogether, but for me, it just makes life so much easier, so why not use it? So let's dive in. The first thing that I use is Google Gemini to come up with ideas for my website, especially for my website, since it kind of has a lot of things that I want it to display. Uh, I want to ask AI what might be a good way to organize that. And so that's basically what I'm asking in this prompt here. And I use Google Gemini versus ChatGPT because I just feel like the responses that Google Gemini gives are just way more creative than ChatGPT, even with the new version that came out recently, 4.0. I don't know. It just feels like the ChatGPT responses are just more robotic and vanilla and the Google Gemini just feels more creative. So that's why I use it for this type of project. And so from there, it will give me a layout for a website or rather a way that I can structure it. And if I like what it gives me, then I can just copy it and then put it on a Google Doc. That's usually what I'll do because what will happen if I start asking more questions to Gemini, then any good answer that it gives me, it'll get lost in the mix. So I try to save what I like from Gemini to a Google Doc. So then I'll either like ask it to expand upon whatever it suggests me, or one thing that I like to do from there is just to straight up ask it, you know, what sections might be appropriate uh, given the context of this project. And so it'll give some suggestions for things that I could have on my website, different sections. So I like that. So I copy that and I put that on my Google Doc to reference later. Another thing that I will have it figure out is to generate an actual sitemap for this project. So to actually come up with how is this, what would be a good way to actually structure this website? And so this is like one of the, this is one of the areas where Gemini, at least in the context of this project, wasn't super helpful with. Uh, because it wanted me to separate my hero section into like a left and a right section so that the left section was about my stuff with YouTube and the right was about my stuff with web design. And it just felt and sounded really clunky. So I did not bother to use that suggestion. Um, and that can happen sometimes. Sometimes the stuff that Gemini suggests just isn't that usable, but I like using it because occasionally it will generate really good ideas that I wanna keep. Um, so anyway, if there are things that I do like about the sitemap, then I will certainly put that in the, the Google Doc. But the last thing I typically use Gemini for is I will have it uh, come up with examples of websites that might be applicable to my project. Again, this is kind of hit or miss, um, but this can be really useful for getting ideas for other websites. And so what I'll do is I'll go to one of these websites, like let's say this one here, um, like this looks like a pretty clean website here. And so what I'll do from here is I'll use go full page and it'll capture the, the screenshot and then I'll copy it and I'll put it in a um, in Figma, all right? And so these are a lot of the websites, or these are the websites that I referenced to get 
design inspiration from. And so these these uh, oops these first two are ones that Google Gemini gave me, and then the rest of them are specific ones that I looked up. Um, and I looked up people who were kind of like in a ballpark similar niche to me. I mean, maybe not really, or at least had like a similar design aesthetic that I was going for. So like I looked up MKBHD, Mitsko, who's a designer and YouTuber. I saw what he did, um, as well as uh, Brene Brown and, and Pat Flynn, just to kind of see what, um, just over, really what I'm doing here is I'm getting a sense of, one, how are people organizing their website in terms of structure? But I'm also looking at just like general design directions as well. I'm not like coming up with anything concrete at this point, but I'm just seeing what's possible. What are people doing? I'm just sort of like stirring the pot in my mind on what I might want to do later on, but I'm not being too nitpicky about anything at this point. So once I have like a few examples of websites that I'm inspired by, then I use my next AI tool, which is Reloom. So Reloom is a component library for Webflow. So they basically have thousands of components that you can use to make uh, developing websites in Webflow so much faster because all their components are mobile responsive right out of the gate. And so it just saves an enormous amount of time. Now, with that being said, it's not free. I think it's $35, $38 a month, something like that. So it is not cheap, but I'm not joking. The time saving aspect of it is phenomenal. But in any case, here's what I use it for. So I use it to generate a sitemap. And so I will use the prompt that I put in Google Gemini, and I will now put it in here um, just talking about what my website is, the purpose of it, the, the um, aspects that uh, I want the website to have, and I'll put it in here and have it generate a sitemap. So once I put all this in and I have it say generate, it'll come up with a sitemap here. And it didn't come up with this original sitemap, but I would say like 80% of this is something that Reloom came up with on its own. And then from there, if I want to add something, which I think I added, I don't know, one of these sections I added, I think it was this one, I just click the plus and I can add any number of different sections into, um, into the sitemap here. And I like sitemaps because, well, for one, I used to poo-poo them. Um, <laughs> and I used to just want to go right to high fidelity and just start designing right away because that's the fun stuff, right? And like, it still is the fun stuff. But for me, it just took so much, it, it was so much slower for me than if I just take the time to get my organization right. I think that's the, like the main thing that I've learned recently is like having an organized structure first makes life so much simpler when I'm designing later. And so now I am pro making a sitemap because it just gives me a very clear hierarchy to what my website is gonna look like, as well as each of the pages. So in the initial part, I pretty much just focused mostly on the home page. I knew that secondary pages weren't gonna be that prominent on my website, but it can generate secondary page content on the, uh, on the sitemaps here. And then once I kinda have like everything, how I, how I want it and, and how I feel is, um, how I want it to be structured, then I will go to the wireframe. And what it does from there is using AI, it'll literally just create, it'll, it'll just create uh, this wireframe on its own. And the copy it put in on its own, it's wild to see it do its thing. And because it's just like, oh my God, it's so much time being saved right now. And so it literally spit out this entire thing in a matter of about 10 seconds. And so what I can do from here is I can look through and I can be like, eh, I don't really like this hero that much. I can click on it and I can replace it with something that I feel might work better um, or I can keep it. Uh, and I just literally go through and I just replace components that I feel aren't doing its justice. And that's sort of what I'm doing in this step. And so you can see here, 
in this wireframe, which is what I ended up going with, I pick the sections that I want. Um, and the thing that I like is that they're not styled. And that, that's like the, the main thing that I, again, I think is important in, the, in this step is I, I just want a design direction. I don't need the final direction. So I like working with wireframes in this section because I don't have to worry about color palettes and typography. I can literally just focus on, okay, how do I want this to, how do I want this to overall to look? Because I can get into the nitpicky stuff later on in Figma. I just want something close to what I'm looking for and, and then go from there. And so that's pretty much what I did from here. And then once I came up with uh, all of my sections that I felt like would represent my website best, including I did the same thing for my about section here. Again, it generated an idea for me and then I just reworked um, adding in components as I saw fit. And once I did that, then pretty much my ideation phase was done at that point. So really like in this phase one of making a website, it's using Google Gemini to get overarching ideas for, for structure and uh, layout. And you may be wondering like, why am I using Gemini and Reloom, Reloom to generate sitemaps? It may sound a little redundant, and it is. However, I do like doing it both because what I can do is I can pluck things that I like from Reloom, and I can pluck things that I like from Google Gemini. So I can kind of take the best from both worlds. If I rely on one AI tool to do all of my <laughs> thinking for me, then I don't have as much variability. And so that's why I like getting, um, I like getting ideas from different tools because I have more to pick from. And like I said, Gemini typically is a little more creative in its output. And so I can get more interesting ideas from Gemini than I can Reloom. Um, so that's typically what I use AI for, is just coming up with overall site structure as well as getting a sitemap and wireframe going. Now, the one thing that Reloom is not really good at is coming up with copy. It's very vanilla, and so that's something that to me is very crucial to have, to have good copy. Um, and that's a skill that takes time, and I'm not you know, the best at it, but I feel like I'm decent at it. And so uh, in the next video, I'm going to be talking about how I approach copywriting in the context of a personal website, as well as going over how I take the wireframes from Reloom and how I kind of further mock them up in Figma to create uh, something that looks a little bit more like the final product that I want. So when that video becomes available, you can check that out here and I will see you there. All right, take care.